So let's go into our next session, and that is with Scott Lawson. Scott is the director of IT architecture at, uh, at QAD. Just a little background, QAD actually provides ERP for, for manufacturing and is a very large uh, technology firm and has been a Evolve customer for a very long time and has been very supportive and um, has had a lot of input uh, into the solution. So he'll take you uh, over uh, through how he's using Evolve and then actually demonstrate um, their Evolve uh, environment and how they use Evolve today. So Scott, it's all yours. All right, thank you. And uh, let me know if my voice is okay and if my video is okay. We're gonna give it all to you today. And you can see by my template slide or my start slide here, uh, I'm just gonna explain about Evolve at QAD, but I'm gonna explain a little bit uh, who is QAD and who's on, on our team. And uh, then I'm gonna talk about our purpose for EA and more importantly, the questions of the business because we feel that enterprise architecture, it's got a lot of diagrams and objects and models and a bunch of stuff, frameworks and whatever. And many, many people at QAD and I'm sure outside of QAD kind of roll their eyes at enterprise architecture and uh, don't want to hear anything about it. But what we've tried to do is use Evolve um, to help people answer questions they have. So it's almost like a Google for the enterprise, uh, you know, not big documents, but hey, what is up with the enterprise? And we do that with um, collecting information, trying to classify that information and trying to clarify that information. And uh, I'm gonna talk on this theme about collection uh, because we also, besides Evolve and the main uh, products, we also earn, uh, own Erwin DT, data transformation, which uh, we like to call collector because it used to be called collector, and it collects information into our repository. And that's really the only way we can keep up. You know, the demo we just saw is great. I love the web modeler. I'm looking forward to installing it later this month or later next month, I should say. But uh, I would, it, it's, it's impossible to draw all the diagrams you need yourself. So we're gonna do a demo to show you how to find those answers in Evolve, in our implementation Evolve, and I'll talk a little bit about our future plans. So um, the, uh, and my slides are not moving, what is that? There we are, QAD. This is a picture of a corporate office in Santa Barbara, California. We're a software company. We make ERP and supply chain software for manufacturers specifically. Last year, we were 40 years old, uh, so we hit the big 4-0, and we have a couple thousand employees, a uh, bunch of offices all over the place, lots of confusion, lots of complication, lots of customers, lots of people doing different things, and we really needed an enterprise architecture to keep track of all that stuff. Just like Dave was saying, I mean, he's a huge company, much bigger than us, and there's stuff all over the place. How do you keep track of it? How do you make sure that you're getting your uh, money out of the things that you buy and that people are communicating together. And so we've been uh, Erwin Evolve users since 2014, which was really uh, pretty much the first, uh, first version or whatever. On my team, I have uh, 10 people on my team. Here they are in their uh, Google Meet uh, meeting. We, we meet uh, video all the time and uh, you can see their names down here. They each have a specialty but really we work on enterprise architecture only about 10% of our time. So really have one person building out Evolve, but it's across all of us. And maybe it's 15% of the time or whatever it varies. They're all highly advanced, skilled, not only architects, enterprise architects, but also technical architects. And they uh, cover the areas from network and business and telecommunications and so forth and so on. So we're a team of 11. And uh, our purpose in enterprise architecture is really to see the big picture. Um, and you need a framework to see that big picture, kind of like this, uh, this uh, subway map or this uh, transit map uh, that we see here. But it's also not only to see the big picture, but to connect the dots. There's a lot of dots and things in your business that you don't even know about. In fact, IT folks have a, have a name for it, which is kind of, kind of bad, shadow IT. It's that IT that somebody you know, built or bought or did something with that you didn't approve. And we're not trying to get rid of shadow IT, we're trying to bring it out of the shadows. Because you know what? Oftentimes we find that when somebody brings something into QID and we know about it, we can connect it to other people who use that tool 
and we take a pivot and we go, you know what, let's get rid of that old tool and let's use this new tool that uh, these folks looked at. And that leads us to shared decisions. We really want to share the decisions with all of QAD. So one key principle that we did right away with Evolve is we open it up to everybody. It's a website, it's just a plain old website and you can browse through it and look at all of our stuff. And if you have questions, ask us. If you are planning something, um, you know, uh, let us know, like look into it here. It's a big database of information, not a bunch of diagrams, not a bunch of static things that we put over in some repository that nobody reads. It's active as is uh, information for us. And that will help and has helped us elevate IT to a strategic position. We don't want to be the the folks in the engine room, as my boss is always saying, just keeping, you know, shoveling coal or whatever, whatever the metaphor is, we wanna be there for the strategic decisions. And to do that, you have to see people, you have to show people what they have, what is connected, how it's related to things, and then they can understand the subtleties of the business. So behind all of this, we needed some sort of framework we needed a, a, a way to organize our information because it's not just about drawing a bunch of diagrams um, randomly. And so, ah, the Zachman framework, we're Zachmanites uh, to the core, and this is what uh, powers our Evolve. Does it power our Evolve? No, it just informs our Evolve. We don't want to talk too much about that because nobody cares about the Zachman framework except for Zachman and maybe uh, me, and I make my uh, team care about it a little bit. All what people care about are business technology questions. And so some of those questions are, how is my identity protected? How are we protected from malware? Hey, will my team be able to work from their home? You know, do, do they have the tools they need? Uh, what systems are in our Mount Laurel, New Jersey office? Because maybe we have to shut it down or maybe there's a, a problem over there. What do we need to consider here? Who can help me? I'm at home and I don't normally have the help desk guy uh, the, in the basement or whatever I can talk to. How can I get help with my application problem? Who do, who do I go and talk about? And maybe what is required to perform a critical process that um, is always done in office? So these are some standard business questions. And what my demo will do is we will answer all six of these questions live using Evolve. And of course, there's dozens and dozens and dozens more questions you can uh, answer um, from all levels. But back to Zachman. Zachman uh, has six questions that he deals with, and we've organized our things, our objects in Evolve as uh, underneath those questions. And so really what you need to understand about enterprise architecture, it's very simple. You, have, you need to, to make a list of stuff, make a list of your things, relate those things together. How are they related? and then make some models, make some diagrams, make some uh, visuals, lists, whatever, out of that information. So I always say we're tracking 10,000 things, but that was a couple of years ago. We really have 14,685 things and 961 diagrams, and they're categorized like this. And you can see some of these guys, some of these objects, say I love them so much I call them guys. <laughs> some of these objects are uh, in a highlighted in a orange color. Well, those are the objects that are collected, that are data transformation. We use Erwin DT to pull those into our repository on a regular basis. Most of them are on every 24 hours. So we have projects in a uh, project management uh, set over here in how, and we pull those in, uh, the project status and update and so forth. We have application contracts and licenses that we pull in from an asset management tool. We have workers, each and every uh, uh, person who works at QAD uh, is pulled in from our HR system and so forth and so on. So there's some uh, accounts, this was a couple of days ago or whatever, but they go up and down and move around, but they're automatically, once you've got this set up, you can join them together, you can associate them is how uh, Irwin calls it. And um, when you re-import them, they keep those associations and you have one representation of each thing. So that's really the key difference here in Irwin or, or these, this tool is that you have one representation of that application. It might show up a whole bunch of different places in different ways, but it's only one. You don't have to redo it. It's not a static diagram. So these are the things we track, but we need to show those on diagrams. And so, um, I wanted to go through a couple of diagram types that we have. 
we have uh, one of our key diagrams that you'll see a bunch of our application communication. This is, hey, what are the applications and how do they pass data? Not really how, but what data do they pass back and forth between one another? Because data is at the essence and the, the, the core of our business. And we're worried about uh, where data is, if we're duplicating it, are we using it right? Are we losing it or whatever? Now, another kind of application diagram is a technology stack. That's where geeks like me and my team, hey, we wanna know what servers they're on, what uh, uh, technology they're using, um, and that way we can get some uh, intelligence and understanding of uh, what we have out there. Notice it's orange. All of those diagrams are generated automatically uh, by the processes that you can set up in Evolve. We also have uh, capabilities uh, associated to applications so we can drill into them. We'll use that a couple of times in the first couple of questions that are hierarchies. I'm a hierarchy fan. I like to classify things and um, that's what we do here. We, we make categories of things and we fit things into, into groups. And so we have a general purpose template to do that. A new diagram we've just developed last year was a network diagram. We really wanted to show the locations, network equipment, technology, and circuits. And you can't make that diagram without all of those objects. So you would have noticed from my previous slide that uh, we auto uh, import circuits. Now, um, we do that by we have an inventory of circuits somewhere else. So what I told my team is like, great, if we have data somewhere else, let's pull it in and associate. So that's what we did there. Um, there's also a process hierarchy, um, exactly like uh, Manuel showed just, just here. We have a, a, a hierarchy of framework, process, sub-process, and task, and I'll show you how that shows up. And we uh, show those in uh, BPMN diagrams, which, you know, Evolve makes a great uh, tool to be able to, to express yourself in the design language that you choose. So you can choose whatever design language you want and be able to uh, use that consistently with templates. So now let us get to the demo. So I'm gonna escape out of here. I'm gonna tab over to my uh, Evolve uh, set here. And somebody out there, let me know if you don't see that properly, but here is our Evolve site. And you can see I have a, a web page here of uh, various views. And one thing, Again, I'll go back a little bit to the Zachman framework. For those of you who are familiar with it, on the left-hand side, I have the questions, why, how, who, what, and so forth. And on the rows, I have the uh, rows of Zachman, the views of Zachman. So we uh, kind of embed Zachman in here without bonking you over the head with it. Lately, we've looked at different ways to uh, present this information, and we might be, um, uh, that's what I'm talking about with the, the uh, the board of director suite and the C-suite, we're looking at ways to develop an Evolve site that will look and feel much less like techno uh, person or whatever, and uh, more like the business. But let's get back to those questions. So the first question was, how is my identity protected? Well, I can drill into my capabilities here, and my top level capabilities, these are the uh, capabilities of the business, and I'm thinking, well, what would that be under? That would be under secure people, products and data, that's how our top level capability is. And under here, we have uh, the capabilities of security, so the security uh, capabilities. And we wrote a big long capability because we didn't want to just say security, because that means anything. We wanted to call out people, products, and data. And so we're talking about my identity, so we're gonna draw into identity management. And all these diagrams you're seeing here are, again, generated. I didn't have to draw these, these are generated from associations. And I can see these are the applications that are uh, that support and that deliver the capability of identity and access management. And I can click on these, like over here in Workday, I have this little pop-up and uh, I can recenter that. And I can see in this pop-up, there's uh, a bunch of information associated in here. I can see the data that Workday receives and so forth and so on. I can see uh, workers, I can get a description and all that kind of stuff. And if I wanna drill into it further, I can double click on Workday and I can see the full uh, picture of Workday. So here's the full application communication diagram of all the uh, data and the applications that are connected to Workday. Now, if you see over on the left-hand side, I have some more Zachman terms over here. Um, and I wanna know what the motivation is. I wanna say, well, how, yeah, how is my identity protected? But is that 
Is that something that is uh, driven by a framework? And when I go into motivations here, I can see um, uh, the capabilities that uh, this application delivered, but more importantly, I can drill down into these requirements. The requirements are the whys of the business, like, okay, well, yeah, you say Workday protects my stuff, but how does it do that? And, and you know, what are the reasons, what are the requirements behind that? And you can see these are all um, uh, NIST framework requirements that we've pulled into here, as well as other requirements. So I can see these lists and I can drill into them. Now, the next question, I'm gonna go back up and it was a very similar question. So we're gonna use a similar method. How are we protected from malware? And uh, I'm gonna go look at that same area. I'm like, well, that's security as well. I'm gonna drill down into this security. And malware is all about uh, something on your servers and your users' uh, devices, on your PCs. So here is the drill in to, uh, to the malware protection. And you can see um, I have all of these tools. I can answer my CIO to say, when, when he says, hey, uh, what's on the client to help us? These are all the things that help us, both on the client um, and off the client, that protect uh, the users at the end uh, point of view. And you know, all of our users globally went home and are working from non-secure uh, locations. And so we needed to, to, uh, to make sure that's um, true here. And I can double click on McAfee like I did before, and I can see uh, McAfee, and I can look at these motivation intentions, and I can see um, uh, you know, any kind of detail in here, and I can see, hey, malicious code is detected, and um, I, will, uh, I can drill into that, and that NIST framework uh, element here shows me that this NIST uh, framework element is actually not only McAfee, but we have other applications to control it. And um, I can even drill into the diagrams that this shows up on and uh, 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 go and see the full NIST framework. In fact, if you wanted to look at that, I can show you just real briefly as a side. We've got the whole framework programmed in here and connected uh, together. Now, the third question was, hey, how, hey, how do I, uh, will my team be able to work at home? So for something completely different, we have a list of applications you need to know what applications your team might have. And we have a hierarchy of applications here, a list of all the highest level applications and um, uh, what's uh, underneath them. So for example, we have an Elastian suite, with a bunch of its components and so forth. But if I scroll down here, I can look at, hey, there's an employee desktop image. So if I click on that, I can open up the employee desktop image. And again, I have a generated diagram that shows me uh, what is on every's employee's PC by default? What is on there for sure? And I can look at there and I can go, oh, look, I have a remote access tool for, uh, for terminals. I have PuTTY on there and I have an open VPN client on there and I have PDF and I have zip uh, files and so forth and I have several browsers. So good, I think I'm good to go as long as I have a standard issue uh, QAD laptop. And maybe some people don't. And so we can use this diagram to say, you know what, you can use your personal computer, but uh, we have to install malware bytes on it um, to be secure. So we have a, a clear picture of that. Okay, the next question that I wanted to answer are, hey, what systems are uh, are in our Mount Laurel uh, office? You know, we, we haven't got locations. What's there? Uh, we have hundreds of people in that office, and so we need to find out what's there. So I can, again, I could use the menu, or I could scroll down here, and I have a view here um, called Equipment by Location. And Evolve gives you these awesome visualizations of maps. So here are all our locations on the map. These are clickable. This again, this is not a diagram like a drawing, but this is a live action database. In fact, we have a dot way up here that's uh, all the applications that are in the cloud. Sort of, we don't know where the applications are or the equipment is or whatever. And uh, I can drill into any of these and I can zoom in if I want, uh, but I'm gonna go to this Mount Laurel, New Jersey here and uh, boom, it opens into the office in Mount Laurel and we have little maps there. And we can see underneath the inventory sets, all of the equipment that is in Mount Laurel. And we can see a list of those things. Hey, we have projectors, we have Chrome boxes, we have a security badge system, we have a firewall and so forth and so on. And uh, you might wanna say, well, okay, that's great, but those are just servers. What about applications? 
applications are uh, who does the work, so they're under responsibility. And you can see here's a list of applications also associated with Mount Laurel. And we can say, oh man, we have we have a, a order management department share there. We want to make sure that it's accessible. So we can take a look at this and we can see this department share and we can see, uh, uh, say, who's responsible for it. We can see, okay, better call the help desk on that one. Um, so we can look in that for all of our uh, locations. Another thing that people ask about is, well, who can help me with an application problem? Again, this is a help desk problem where normally in a big office, you just, you know, the person is at their desk and you go and call them or you go and uh, wander by there with your problem. But now everybody's at home. So how do we do that in COVID uh, land and in, in lockdown? We have all these views here of all of our most largest, most popular um, uh, used applications and one of them uh, for an example is change point so i can click on change point it's a psa tool and you can see this is our diagram and, and like all diagrams in evolve these are active and you might say well how do i tell uh, who's who's uh, in charge of that all i got to do is click on this and again i can scroll down in here and i can see hey the r1 worker that's our term for um uh, support and the R2 worker are these folks. And I can even just go click on Keith Roberts here and show you uh, the phone number of where he is and even drill down into who he's or what applications he's responsible for to see if he's busy. Um, not only uh, what uh, he's responsible for in applications, but on actual computers and servers as well. So you can uh, go find that out um, pretty, pretty easily um you know how, wherever you are um so uh, if you want though a little more information you can drill down into let's say change point is not working you can see all the information of what is connected to change point and um, these little parallelograms are data and we can see data moving from the data warehouse into change point and so maybe we have that problem and we can go look at that and again, I can uh, pivot here and I can go, well, time booked. What is this? This is a piece of data. This is a piece of composite data. It is uh, PII. And I can drill into where all that data is. Now, lastly, the last question was, hey, who can perform uh, a particular process? And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, is to um, drill into uh, this process. I think I clicked on the wrong thing there. There we go. Um, and uh, we have process over here. Again, looking at the Zachman questions, process is about how you do things. And when I click on capability, uh, how, these are all the views that I have to see um, what, uh, what my uh, processes are, okay? And I have things programmed into here, like for IT, this is the IT governance process map, and this is in the form of, uh, of COBIT uh, over here, and we drew this out. Um, in here, but a simpler thing, not just for IT, but for the whole company are these frameworks. And just like Manuel was showing, these processes here, um, you can drill into. So I'm gonna drill into the sales or the customer relationship framework. And we, again, this is classification of um, things. And I can say, well, I wanna look at implement products and services. And I can see, oh, okay, well, we have all of these uh, elements here. And again, I have these lovely pop-ups and you can see when I click on deliver product, it shows up over here and I can say like, oh, here's a document reference for the fulfillment quality plan. Okay, I'm gonna click on that. And that um, actually pulls in a, uh, a document from our document management system that shows us the official uh, uh, policy or quality plan overview document for this particular uh, process. And I can read through all that. That is over in another uh, system. Again, we don't pull this physical document into here, but we pull a reference into there. So, um, so that's cool. But if I want to drill down even further um, and get to uh, very specifics, we can drill down again here and say, let's go to this easy onboarding process, which is uh, something that we do when we deliver a product. And we have these sub processes, and you can see they're different color. We can tell they're sub processes, and we can drill into this and say, uh, well, what is the manage engage process? And finally get to a point of a, um, of a diagram, a swim lane diagram that we've 
uh, built in here. And we can see all of the processes and um, how they work together. And we can get uh, click on stuff and we can get a description of the process and so forth and so on. So basically that's how we've implemented Evolve. And um, I'm uh, always looking to build it out. And so I'm, we are excited about the web modeler. We're gonna install that next month, I think, uh, with our new version and be able to, to do some of that collaboration. But um, I'm, I'm really enthused about all the tools that work together so that we can collect the things in the business, we can uh, manage all of those objects and we can um, go and uh, assemble views and diagrams both manually and automatically to show people how to answer their own questions. And as we get to the C-suite and the board of directors, we plan to layer over more and more um, things of the business, things that they care about, maybe value chains, maybe the high level bits. Of course, we came at this from the IT department. And so we have a lot of IT kind of stuff and you can see that down here, we uh, catalog data stores and um, uh, uh, data and applications and so forth. But as we get up into the higher uh, levels, we really want to uh, understand how projects are gonna affect um, the uh, business and uh, what are the standards and regulations we're following. Um, things like uh, data sensitivity. This is a big question in COVID-19 about, you know, hey, do we have the highest sensitivity of data? What are the applications uh, that have that data? We have little symbols over here. And these, again, are all live. This is not a thing that I had to assemble. This is a generated tool. And I can say, oh, wow, the data warehouses, business and uh, data sensitivity is the highest. I'm going to drill into that and see what is up with the data warehouse. What is that all about? And I have various diagrams on that. Okay, so I'm going to cut it off there. And uh, so that's really, really fantastic live demo, Dave, uh, Scott. So many interesting things that that you talked about, and you know, I spend a lot of time with the industry analysts, and um, you know, you're speaking sort of the forward-thinking EA language that they really are sort of evangelizing across the space, especially when it comes to, you know taking the output of all of the work that you've done and building all these models and answering all the questions and being able to generate that into something that can be shared with the C-suite, right? To be able to take the tool out of the sort of tooliness, right? And and yeah. bring it up to, to being a, a business decision-making source like every other source. So I thought that that was really an interesting thing. And then the other thing that you that you talked about that Dave talked about as well was, you know, this this the importance of of data, right? So so data and systems and technology and architecture all going together and we actually are going to spend some time in our June uh, session talking very specifically about the role of data as we see many many more companies um, like yours that are bringing on, you know, multiple tools and are looking for all of the things that we do here with data governance and data modeling and 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 EA and, and BP modeling coming together. So very interesting. So